Let's remind ourselves of the particle model for a liquid. It will look something like this. With the particles close together, but the particles are able to move over each other and flow. Pressure in a liquid acts in all directions. So if we looked at this glass of water here, we wouldn't be saying pressure is just acting downwards, so we need to calculate it here at the bottom. Because these particles are able to move and flow over each other, pressure acts in all directions within that liquid. Because the particles, as they're flowing around, will be colliding with each other and all of the sides of the container that they are in. So in a liquid, pressure acts in all directions. Liquids cannot be compressed because their particles are close together. And this actually makes liquids really useful. Because if you apply pressure on a liquid, the liquid can transfer the pressure somewhere else. Let's look at this in terms of a brake system. When you want to slow down on your bike, you apply a force to this lever here. So you're applying pressure to the liquid within this wire. And this wire contains brake fluid. So this is full up with a liquid. So you're applying the pressure to this liquid because of this brake lever system here. And that liquid will transfer that pressure all along the brake cable with this fill up as li with liquid as well, with brake fluid, until it can apply a force within this mechanism to be able to apply your brakes to your wheel. So by applying pressure up here, the liquid is able to transfer that pressure onto your brake pad and allow you to slow down your bike. And if there is any air in these brake cables, the system simply won't work because these particles won't be able to transfer along that pressure along the brake cable and that's when you get really slack brakes and you have to replace your brake fluid. In fluids, pressure increases with depth. So if we had this container full of water with three holes coming out of it, if we say that pressure increases with depth, can you have a think about what it would look like if we opened all of these holes to allow the water out? Well, it would look a little something like this. The top hole here is under the least pressure, so we have less of a force applied to the water at the top. Whereas if you go down, you see this hole here, this is under the most pressure because it's deepest and pressure increases with depth. So here we get a much greater force pushing out the water so it travels a lot further. And this is really important to consider for engineers that are building dams because dams hold back a large volume of water. So at the top here behind this wall there will be a big reservoir storing water. And because pressure increases with depth, as you can see in the picture, the walls are much thicker at the bottom. So if we looked at the dam, it might have this kind of shape where the wall is thin at the top and then it gets much thicker at the bottom because all of the water behind it here needs to be held back and because pressure increases with depth, you're going to have a lot more pressure at the bottom of the wall than you are at the top. So they've got these really, really thick walls at the bottom and they are thinner at the top. Divers have to be very careful when diving because of the link between pressure and depth. As they descend, which means go down, the weight of the water above them increases. And this means the pressure exerted on their body increases. So you might have experienced that if you've ever tried to dive deep down into water it's much more difficult the deeper you go because you're experiencing in all directions an increase in pressure on your body. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com 
If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.